So Vivo recently launched its new X60 series of smartphones and they've been getting a lot of hype, especially because these phones actually have some really good specs for the price. But if you remember, we've always said this, we don't buy phones for the specs, we buy the experience. Yes, you can quote us on that. So I've been trying out the new Vivo X60 that comes with the latest FunTouch OS 11 on board. And after having tried out this phone, I can tell you this, there are some big improvements, which is good, but there are also some big problems. Talking about the big improvements first, this is the new Vivo X60 running the latest FunTouch OS 11 update on top of Android 11. And you know what, this is without a doubt the most uh, usable, most user-friendly FunTouch OS has ever been in all these years. Seriously, I remember using older iterations of FunTouch OS that had the whole iOS look, even iOS like Control Center, iOS like Search. And compared to that, this is clean and more Android-like. I mean, to give you a better idea, here's the Vivo V17 running FunTouch OS 10, side by side against the Vivo X60 running FunTouch OS 11.1. Now first up, as you can see, the icons are flatter all around and more modern looking in FunTouch OS 11. The app drawer also has this more cleaner and nicer look. The notification shade is better and quick settings are now at the proper place. Yes, the iOS control center is gone. And like the whole look here is close to stock Android, which is a good thing. Now there are more examples, like the settings page has better categorization of options. And I like that you don't have to do extra steps to turn on things like the dark theme. See, the point here is the UI is cleaner and better looking, even when you check out the system apps. Plus, there are a few key functionality improvements. I mean, I was never a fan of the Jovi homepage on the home screen that Vivo phones used to come with. And the good news is there's Google Discover now. Also, the launcher now has an option to let you swipe down on the home screen to access the notifications rather than the search, which is a big usability improvement. Another good change is support from multiple user accounts, which weirdly FunTouch OS never supported. Now, it's not just about the UI changes. There are some really cool features too in FunTouch OS 11. So there are new always on display styles. For example, there is this sensory clock style, which shows the sun and the sun here automatically changes depending on the time. It's pretty cool. There's also a new ultra game mode, which brings some interesting features like 4D vibration, advancements for better visuals in games and more. S capture is better too. It lets you record the screen with system audio. It lets you record a GIF and there are a ton of screenshot options as you can see. Now there are other new features in FunTouch OS 11 and I definitely like the new UI improvement, but let's talk about the big problems now. First up, every single Vivo app, every single Vivo feature has its own privacy statement and privacy terms. Yep, two of them. I mean, it gets annoying after a while. Imagine getting these prompts every single time you open an app on your brand new 40,000 costing smartphone. Now, I did not go through each and every single privacy policy in all of these apps, but the ones I did go through were really shady. For example, the Vivo browser's privacy terms clearly states that it collects the device ID, OS details, the country, network type, usage duration, photo and video files, and more. And below it states that Vivo will retain your personal data for three years, and they may also share data with third parties. Here's another example. The iManager app's privacy terms mention it collects the OS details, GUID, and photos, videos, and other files. And below it says this data will only be processed locally on the device, but then there's also mention of sharing data with third parties. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of other privacy terms in this OS are shady. So yeah, FunTouch OS is not so fun on the privacy front. Also, the UI might have gotten better, but there's still bloatware, ads and recommendations. First up, there's a lot of bloatware here. There's Facebook, Netflix, Moj, Prime Video, Daily Hunt, Flipkart, Snapchat, PhonePay, Amazon. And while these are uninstallable, you also get this hot apps and hot games folder. And you know what? These are not hot, definitely. Can't be uninstalled. And they're not exactly folders. They're basically app recommendations. Now, along with all the bloatware, you also get a lot of Vivo apps. I mean, the important system apps like the clock, the calendar are fine. But who needs the Vivo app store? First of all, it looks ugly. Secondly, it brought me so many notifications when I hadn't even opened it. And when I did open it, it showed me these app recommendations in the whole page. In fact, later on in my usage, it even brought me a game recommendation notification with an install button. Yeah, that's a lot of confidence. Anyway, there are a lot of other unnecessary Vivo apps. There's browser, which I'm not sure anyone's going to use, but if you do use it, you'll hate the cluttered AF homepage, 
and there's so many weird recommendations and ads. There's also an iManager app, which is similar to the cleaner app on MIUI. And yeah, just useless if you ask me, especially on a high-end phone like this. Now, along with apps, even Vivo's features show recommendations. The Jovi homepage has recommendations and so does the search feature, which shows you recommended apps and stories and videos. There's also the lock screen poster feature, which is basically a way to, you know, show you ads and articles. Now, apart from all of these irritating factors, one thing that really annoyed me is the fact that even though Vivo has finally implemented Android's native gestures in Fun Touch OS 11, but the multitasking gesture still does not work at all. As you can see, I'm swiping left and right on the bottom and nothing happens. You have no other choice but to go to the recents page and then switch to the last app. Frankly, I like that Vivo has left behind the whole iOS-like UI and instead gone for a more Android-ish sort of experience in FunTouch OS 11 update. That is indeed the right direction to go for. But on the other side, there's the ads, the bloatware, the privacy issues, all of the other annoyances I talked about, and those are big, big problems. And I really hope Vivo fixes that in the upcoming FunTouch OS versions. Because at the end of the day, a premium phone deserves a premium experience. Well, I want to know what you guys think of the new FunTouch OS 11 update on the new Vivo phones. So make sure to comment down below. Also give this video a like, make sure to share it and subscribe to the channel for more amazing tech videos. Last me signing off. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. And yeah, stay safe, guys. Take care.